let's look at the connection between the universal gravitation we've been talking about and just the constant acceleration of gravity near the surface of the Earth. Here's the Earth yet again. I'm not drawing the continents because I'm really bad at it. Here it is. Now, the radius of the Earth. Uh, here, here we go. R E. And the radius of the Earth is very big 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. The altitude of a commercial plane, which is probably the highest most of us ever get, speaking in terms of elevation, is 9 times 10 to the 4th meters. So what you can see is your entire life is spent within about 1% of our E. That's true now. This week, Virgin Galactic took a space plane up, SpaceX has taken off, putting people in, who knows? Maybe eventually a lot of us will get to go more than 1%. But for now, we're all living right around here, okay? So the basic idea is that you never experience a lot of the big fall off. You know, a lot of the, how the force varies with one over r squared, you're in such a small range, you don't get to see all that. So let's put the numbers on that. So let's look at uh, the kinematics um, for a mass m. m near the Earth. All right. So we know that that mass m is going to feel what? It's going to feel fg equals big G mass of the Earth and that little m over really just the radius of the Earth squared. Because it's always at the radius of the Earth. It, the variation is essentially nothing, less than 1%. So you say, OK, I'm going to set that force equal to ma. So this is Newton's second law. So we're assuming the only force the mass is feeling is, is gravity. So look at that, and you say, oh, OK, well, I'll just cancel the mass. And you see oh, everything feels the same acceleration. Fine. And you say the acceleration, then, that I'm feeling must be big G, mass of the Earth over the radius of the Earth squared. Those are all constants. So just like we say near the surface of the Earth, the acceleration of gravity is constant. It's always some number. And if you plug in the constants here of G, the gravitational, or the gravitational constant, mass of the Earth, radius of the Earth, Indeed, you get 9.8 meters per second squared. That's where that number comes from, in some sense. That how big the Earth is, how far we are from the center, and how massive it is. Okay. So now you see uh, that this expression is basically what we call little g. And you can calculate it for anything, for the moon, for Mars. Anytime you have a planet and you're near the surface, um, all you need to know is the mass of the planet and how big it is. And that will tell you the gravitational acceleration. So 1% is small, but it's not zero. Right? You actually can sort of detect the change in uh, g as you move up and down. And we can kind of look at it graphically here. So I'm going to room over there. but only plot it here. If we look at the, at the universal fg as a function of radius. Right? So the force would go to infinity if the Earth were a point particle and you got right next to it. But really. Uh, it only, it's only meaningful outside the surface of the Earth. If you go inside of a planet, we'll get into that some other time. <clears throat> but it comes down like this, and you know it drops off as 1 over r squared, we plotted there. But the point is, you live here, so if we blow that up, it's going down a teeny bit, but it is detectable how much it goes down. So, what you would do to get that is you would just say that instead of saying I live only at RE, you should put a small number in. You would say the gravitational constant is G M E over, and then you'd say the radius of the Earth plus my altitude H squared. And that would get you the change in the gravitational constant as you go from altitude to zero and you go to higher and higher altitudes. You simply plug in the, the universal um, expression. And as long as this is small, you're not going to find a very big deviation from 9.8. But there is some deviation that is easily measured. <clears throat>